So MCP model context protocol right now is all the rage. And you've probably seen a bunch of content popping up everywhere about it. But in this video, I wanna do something different. Years ago, when I used to teach a coding bootcamp, I always told my students how to research is just as important as knowing how to code. There's an art to it, knowing where to look, what to look for, and how to filter out what's not worth your time. So in the spirit of that, this video is a curated guide. I'm going to show you well-made videos that introduce you to MCP, explain what each of them covers and why I chose them, and then pair them with the most helpful documentation. So my goal is to give you a one-stop reference for learning MCP so you don't have to go digging around for hours looking for which video is actually good, which one's like a waste of time, and same thing for like the documentation. All right, so let's go ahead and just kick it off with the first one. If you enjoy learning by building from scratch, then this video is for you. The Future of AI in VS Code, MCP Servers Explained by Burke Holland. Now, why did I choose this video? The narrative technique is simple and unfiltered meaning that it's straight talk explaining concepts as if it's over lunch. And if there's anything that goes wrong throughout the video, he addresses the issue and fixes the problem right there in front of you, unedited. He also kicks off the video by explaining the problem first that's gonna be solved. The coding technique, building a game with Copilot's agent mode and MCP. So now let's go over the content flow of how Burke implements his narrative and coding technique for this learning experience for MCP. Now, right off the bat, after his intro, he shows how to set up MCP in VS Code. But after that, before even explaining what MCP is, he starts off by stating what the problem is that MCP solves. And he does this by generating a visual diagram to show the problem and how VS Code interacts with MCP to communicate with a database. As an example, around the three minute mark, he begins to demo MCP by creating a game, which he uses Copilot's agent mode to show how to use an MCP server to add more tools to VS Code that could be used. At this point, he explains where you can find more servers like at mcp.so, where he'll ultimately choose in this example, Perplexity, which he explains is essentially a search engine and describes how it's going to be used within the game. At the seventh minute mark, he begins to create a game, which essentially is you being a fly that must navigate using the cursor keys to pass obstacles in order to win. And all this is done using Copilot's voice commands. The last thing that I wanna mention that's great in this video is how he shows hurdles he encounters and fixes them in real time. This is an unfiltered approach, which makes for a great learning experience because it shows the issues that you are likely to encounter. So it's not edited out. You see it happen and you see it getting addressed. And this brings us to towards the end at the 12 minute mark where he wraps up showing how the fly game works. When learning a new concept like MCP, sometimes it's good to see various examples in one video to solidify your understanding. And if you're a fan of that, then you'll enjoy this VS Code plus MCP getting started video by James Montemagno. Now, why did I choose this video? Well, for its narrative technique, it follows a detailed step-by-step -step approach, whether he's covering enabling MCP in VS Code, configuring MCP servers, and his various code examples, which leads me into the coding technique, which is to start off with a very simple example, and in his case, a time conversion using MCP, and then using MCP to leverage functionalities in GitHub, such as getting, creating, and updating GitHub issues. This video also has a source course available, so you can work along with James, in addition to other links to resources in the video description. Now let's turn our attention by covering the content of his video. James starts off by explaining what MCP is at a very high level. And the style in which he answers the question of what MCP is, is exactly how you'd want to answer it in an interview that shows that you actually understand it and not regurgitating a textbook definition. He then moves on to 
an overview of the model context protocol and servers on GitHub to set the stage before he moves into giving a step-by-step -step process of how to enable MCP. Next, he brings us into opening up settings.json to configure MCP servers in VS Code. And after that, we then move into the actual examples. And the first is just a very simple time conversion MCP server using a Docker configuration. The other good thing that I want to point out is that he doesn't cut corners, but points out some small details, such as if you want to choose a session versus a workspace or always during this process. Now, once James is done with the simple example, he moves into a real world, more sophisticated example to work with GitHub. So to prep you for this, he has a nice little overview of the GitHub MCP server and then moves on to choosing a configuration such as Node to set up NCP with the personal access token, but also mentions how for best practices you can consider using input variables. So in the context of GitHub, the examples that he covers includes searching an issue, some commands using a pull request, and then demos creating and updating issues. And last but not least, he implements a feature based on the knowledge he's been giving it in order to be able to demonstrate agent mode and MCP workflow together. If you like learning from content where the code is already set up and explained, Matt Sukop's introduction to MCP is for you. Why did I choose this video? Well, for the narrative technique, he uses his pre-demo code review approach, meaning that nothing is done to the code without him explaining the code to you first. Now, there is some Azure function knowledge that's useful to have prior to looking at this video, but you can learn about it here. As for his coding technique, he uses the Combo Tech demo where he's using MCP and Azure function together in the demonstration. So you're not just learning about MCP, but also how to use it with a separate technology like Azure functions. And last but not least, you save a lot of time because of the fact that the code already exists that you're going to be manipulating. And he includes some nice resources in the video description. Now let's go over the flow of his video. Matt first starts out explaining what MCP is in the context of using it with Azure functions. And then he goes ahead and shows you the code that you could use to download to follow along. Now, close to the four minute mark, he then tells you the packages that you need, which is great because sometimes code could be provided, but then you still need to set up and update packages and he doesn't ignore that. And then he moves on to review the code so you know exactly what you're working with. After that, he moves on to explaining how you could use the azd up command to spin up the Azure resources that are going to be needed to use in conjunction with the MCP tool triggers. After that, he moves on to demonstrating how to add and configure the MCP server and then actually implementing using a couple of Azure functions such as the get snippet and hello functions. So in all, this is a great video to just get things set up and save a lot of time so that you can get straight to the demo and focus your learning on how to use MCP server with an Azure function in your journey to solidify your understanding of how MCP works. Now, before wrapping up, I do want to include some resources that will now make a lot more sense having gone through the videos that I've just shown you. And the first one is on Visual Studio Code's website itself, our blog section that you could look at here for an introduction to what MCP is and some examples. Then on GitHub, we have some more content here on MCP that you could review, particularly if you want to focus on some examples relative to either TypeScript, Python, Java, etc. We also have the official modelcontextprotocol.io website that you can review. And while I don't personally think this is the friendliest explanation, it should make much more sense after reviewing our videos. And there's also this blog here on building AI agents tools using remote MCP with Azure Functions, which should also make more sense now that you've experimented with one of our videos that covers Azure Functions. And last but not least, this website, which was referenced earlier with some MCP servers that you could experiment with. All right, that wraps it up. So I hope that this video helped you cut through the noise and give you a solid foundation to start learning MCP the right way. Remember, learning isn't just about 
watching the most hype content. It's about choosing the right sources for the right reasons. If you found this helpful, feel free to drop a like, leave a comment on which video you like or found the most helpful. And of course, if you want more content like this, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss what's coming up next. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.